It better be fun. In my heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. Where's Mr. Bear? I haven't seen Mr. Bear, Callum. They took him and they replaced your mother with me, kid. Stay in the car. I'll go and ask information. I don't know all about a stuffed animal. Let's see. Yeah, definitely. Killer squirrels. Atlantic Island Park. Bingo. Looks kind of 70s. Attention patrons, the park is now closed. Please make your way to the car park at your earliest convenience. Employees prepare the park for shutdown. You can. Any public restroom can be scary. Callum was born the day this place opened. This is his favorite place in the world. Tribute to the untamed heart of Solomon Island and the people who use their talents to bring the dream of the dream of Nathaniel Winter to life. It is probably a place where joy and laughter are gathered and used to infect all those who followed after. I like this talk about infecting. Oh, here's just the A button again. Excuse me, miss, are you having an episode? Lorraine. Lorraine. Don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. Take a deep breath. Think about the last place you saw your son's teddy bear. Hey, stop! Why don't you know my name? Or he know my name? I think your boy just ran into the park. I'll unlock the gates for you. Where are you going? This way, Mommy. Walking into the park gets an achievement. Cool. Callum, I told you to wait in the car. This way. Mm, you look kind of weird. Callum, I told you to wait in the car. Over here. There's something special about the entrance to an amusement park. A line drawn between the real world and the world of whimsy within. Oh, long lines. On this side, the apathy of our everyday lives. And on the other, anything we might dare to dream. It's no wonder Calum ran back inside. I wouldn't want to leave either. Attention Wait up there for Mommy, Callum! Over here! Have a Wait for Mommy, Callum! Catch me, Mommy. I'll catch you, all right. Wait up there for Mommy, Callum. Monic invasion in progress. Crappy. Stop, Callum. Where are you, boy? Let's see. Callum, you can't catch me. I don't want to. Oh. Okay, 
gonna be kind of strange. Yeah. Carrie Killian is Satan's tour. Wait, what's my name? Huh? I don't think it's me. Okay. This belongs to Kelm. See, evil squirrels or chipmunks, whatever that is. Chad the chipmunk, chipmunk. Huh? Just a drunk guy in a suit. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, oh it's a poem. Chad the chipmunk, worst in class. Chad can't even seem to pass. Chad gets angry, likes to fight. Chad is beaten every night. Chad will have a dead end job. Chad will die a useless slob. How sweet. What's this? Oh, he sounds happy. Wait, huh? They're laughing. Oh. What's this one? Tunnel of Tales. Okay. Come back. Oh, I got time for a ride. Callum, the boy will be fine. Stay where you are. Mommy's gonna go on a ride. She'll catch you. Callum, tell mommy where you are. Boxing. <clears throat> Near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter his wife and his two children. A boy named Hansel and a girl named Gretel. I know those names. They were very poor and had very little to bite or <laughs> sup. What will become of us? The woodcutter asked his wife one night. I tell you what, husband. We will take the children into the thickest part of the forest tomorrow and abandon them there. No, my wife. Very I pain. cannot do that, said the man. Then we will all fall Callum, starve, you fool. Callum, where did you go? Hansel and Gretel overheard their parents talking, and Gretel began to weep. Do not fret, Gretel, Hansel said. He crept out of the hut and gathered white stones from the ground to fill his pockets. The next morning, the woodcutter leads the children into the forest. Before they leave, their mother gives them a slice of bread and warns them that they will get no more food that day. Ain't good. Clever Hansel leaves a trail of white stones behind them as they pass into the woods. When their father leaves them, the children wait a while, then follow the trail back to their parents' house. After receiving a thorough scolding from their parents for getting lost in the woods, <laughs> the children are sent to bed home. without any supper. Hansel tried to sneak out and collect more white stones, but found that the door was locked. Tomorrow I will take them into the woods myself, the wife told the woodcutter. In the morning, their mother gave them a slice of bread and led them deep into the forest once again. Supposed to do that? 
Hansel broke his bread into pieces and left a trail of breadcrumbs to lead them safely home. But hungry-eyed birds snatched up the breadcrumbs and his trail was destroyed. Yeah, birds. Abandoned by their parents and unable to find the trail home, the children wandered in the forest for three days. The children stumbled into a clearing with an exceedingly strange house. Its walls were made of gingerbread, and its windows were panes of clear sugar. Hansel, desperately hungry, ran forward and began to nibble on the walls. my house an old woman emerged from the house sniffing the air and peering around with cloudy eyes oh you dear children who brought you here just come in and stay with me no harm will come to you but Hansel and Gretel stayed back for the old woman reminded them of their cruel mother Come, children, don't be afraid. I have something for you. Death? The old woman offered them two enormous lollipops. The children took them and began to eat. You see, nothing to fear here. Come inside, the old woman urged, and the children, still licking their sweets, followed. to work, sweeping and cleaning her hut. Your brother will make a good mouthful, the old witch told Gretel. Once he is fattened up, I shall feast upon him. There's a plan. Time passed, and poor Hansel refused to eat, fearing the day that the witch would eat him. The witch, for her part, grew impatient. Today, I will cook and eat your brother, Gretel. Climb inside and light the oven. But Gretel pretended not to understand. Uh, I do not know how. Where is the opening? Fool, the old witch said. The opening is here. <laughs> and she moved to show Gretel. Seizing her courage, Brave Gretel gave the witch a shove, and the old crone tumbled forward into the oven. Gretel slid a large iron bolt over the door to the oven. Gretel freed her brother Hansel, and together they lit a fire beneath the oven. And though she screamed and begged, the children sat by the oven until her screams had stilled, and the witch was cooked. Moral, never trust strange children you find signed out your house licking the walls. children can't survive on sweets. They divided up the body of the old witch and ate her. I don't remember that from the fairy tale. Not that, not that part. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hi, birdie. Hansel and Gretel. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. I wonder if you're not messed up. Those poor children. The whole world against them. The forest. The birds. The old witch. Even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister. Hand in hand against the unkind world. Devouring old women. We were always hungry. Looking for our own house made of candy. Looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. 
Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. Can't go in there. Oh, there's a note here. I wonder what this is. I can't even read it. <laughs> That's way to zoom in. Uh, give it a go. Hang on. Poor eyes. Purchase the land on Solemn Island for a pittance. I might add whatever old Archie Henderson did to the locals. Just the mention of his name had people slamming doors and locking shutters from the moment I arrived on the island. My lawyers had arranged everything in advance, but the realtor still had to come and deliver the keys to me personally. He took it upon himself to offer me another warning. I don't know what you're planning to do with this land. My... Oh, Mr. Winter. But the soil here is bitter with a curse carried from the old country. Old man Henderson, he did terrible dark things. The land remembers, sir. I dismissed him shortly afterwards, mostly amused by his pathetic attempts at warning me off. I had a, a great vision for this place, and the will to see that vision through to the very end. Atlantic Island Park. The name is perfect, and I can't imagine it being anything else. This is the start of something amazing. Uh, I could, but I had to get my face like right up on the screen. <laughs> so. And I hear an evil voice. Can't make out what it's saying, though. Mm -hmm. Another accident. This place. Yeah. Oh, there's Mr. Bear. Okay, got to get close again. Despite the constant interruptions to work, Atlantic Island Park will be opening on time. The governor is booked to cut the ribbon, so the only real question is whether we will have any customers. I'm not truly worried. The customers will come out of simple curiosity. I deduce what was needed from the band writings of Archie Henderson. It's astonishing to think that a re that a resonance of positive emotions can be used to fuel such a process. Henderson himself chose to use negative. That carried some of the taint that still lingers in this place. I will not make his mistakes. Very soon, I will know if this has been for nothing. Ooh, Mr. Bear, what happened to you? Okay. Ooh. We'll get the kid anywhere. I can't take that anyway, can I? Yeah, get him new bear. One that won't scar him for life. Don't try to kill mommy boy. Oh. This old thing used to make the blood run to my head. Make me dizzy. The guy just snapped. Those poor kids. It's a little better, but it's still awfully small. We are waiting for a turn on the ride. Frank, me, and the boys. This fellow in the chipmunk suit is making an ice carving while people took photographs. Lawrence wanted to go over to him, but I've always been a bit wary of those suits. They give me the creeps. Me too. It's silly, I know. Anyway, the chipmunk man, he was carving and picking away at the ice, and at first we thought he was making some animal, like a tiger or lion, but as more and more ice fell away, when you first looked, it was like a human face, smiling out of that block of ice. But the more you looked at it, the more you saw that there was something not quite right about the proportions, something unnatural that made your heart begin to beat just a little bit faster, like you were prey and that thing the ice was a hunter. But then these teenagers walked up and one of them made a face at the carving and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit, and then, well, he went berserk. For a few moments, it was chaos. Everybody was running away from the guy who had one of the teenagers on the ground, and he was stab, stab, stabbing with the ice pick, and blood was spraying, and people, shouldn't be spray, spray, spraying, and people were screaming, and people, and Frank and I had the, yeah, and Frank and I had the kids, and we were dragging them away as fast as we could. And the last thing I saw before Frank dragged me away was the eyeball of one of those poor kids that landed on the ice sculpture. 
making the horrible creature look more or less alive. Don't laugh at the guy in the chipmunk suit. He won't like it. Stop it. Basically stopped. Oops, I get out. Ah, crap. <laughs> huh. Hey, chipmunk. Don't stab me. Not sure there's any reason to do this, but. Oh, yeah, it's making the weird noise again. Riots in Old Abandoned Park still be perfectly safe, right? Oh, <laughs> that looked friendly. You get a real good look at it, I saw teeth. Somebody's in the booth. There you go. Gone now, of course. Apart. Okay. Eh, probably not. Hey, okay, the exit, please. <laughs> hey, oh, picture. Okay, we got here. Oh, I remember this. Why is it just lying here? I guess. I guess that's not doing anything. Treachery hides in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled, red, bawling thing and I thought, is that it? We build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. And they shattered, and as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. There before. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. Okay. <laughs> I thought working in the park for a summer would be a lot of fun, but the end of season here really drags. There's... No. Oh, there aren't that many tourists around, and so most of the staff spend their days standing around gossiping, and most of their gossip is about Chad. I wonder why. I mean Steve, see? Even I'm starting to call him Chad, and I went to school with the guy. That goddamn suit. In the beginning, it was a laugh. Steve, the local lush, has had the 
chipmunk child friendly mascot on at Atlantic Island Park. I'll keep your daughters and all of that. But the more he wears that suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first it was little things, like refusing to change out of the suit at, at work and taking it home with him every day. This badly needs a zoom feature. But then I saw him at Susie's di diner, still wearing it, and it wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained discreetly to park managers about the smell. And I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter, the owner, one day. But nothing seems to have changed. The suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by. And apparently Steve has picked up some new skills since he, last time I saw him puking up in a gutter outside the something station. I, I can't make the word out. Because he sure as hell can carve a mean ice sculpture. Those shapes he makes in the ice, ice though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, Bucky me, and he just hung around for a while. I couldn't really tell because of the suit, but it seemed like he was just staring at me, sizing me up. I fucking me, whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted, and he just stood there, not saying anything. Eventually, I called my supervisor, and when he came by, Chad, Steve, wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing, so here it is. Also, I quit. I don't want to see that chipmunk suit ever again. Laura Henman. <laughs> There's another kind. Oh! Uh, hello. Can I get in there and do I want to get in there? I thought. Let's back to the. Oh, okay, bumper cars. Alright. Constant crashes in 80s music. Guess it floats someone's boat. Where did you go? I'm not playing anymore, Callum. Mother Duck said quack, 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 quack. Mommy's axe said whack, 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 I don't know. Well, of course, we're going to ride the bumper cars. We can get to them. That one's got juice. I might want to read the safety report first, then ride. Okay. I'm not reading here. Shakes, okay. Let's see, brief description of the accident or incident. During the transport of the bumper cars into the arena, one of the straps attaching the load to the truck came untied, causing a cascade of bumper cars onto Francis, who was. Ooh, poor Francis was standing directly directing the driver. Francis was crushed by the weight of the cars. Describe any injuries caused. Francis was killed. Yeah. Did the injured employee see a doctor? <laughs> uh, I had to pronounce me had to pronounce him dead. Well yes. <laughs> yes, did you file an employee's portion of a worker's compensation form? Yes. Dexter the truck driver claims to have seen someone on the back of the road undoing the straps. Nobody else reported seeing that that Sheriff has requested that Dexter provide them with urine samples. What could have been done to prevent this accident incident? Double checking the straps after transit should be mandatory. And drug screening for all drivers. Additional comments. Local laborers are very superstitious. And this hasn't helped. Some of them are refusing to, run to return to work until we have someone from the local church walk the park and exercise the bad spirits. Huh? What? Me? <laughs> that was very close. Okay, now 
how can I ride? Fine. Let's see. Did that just land there by chance, or am I supposed to go check it out? There's steps there. It's a matter of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Once, Could when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just a scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. Scratch, when he scratching. gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she just gets some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. But instead my mouth said, yes, Sheriff. Shock therapy or something? He did that anymore. Okay. Continually delayed by the incompetence of the builders. Problem is that they are locals and so they believe a lot of the rumors about what old man Henderson used to do here. They grew up on these tales. Every time a bolt comes loose or a wrench goes missing, these fools are crossing themselves against the black magic. Of course, that is why I chose this site over other potentials. Solomon Islands say nexus for dark energies and the thought of all that power just dissipating beneath the earth here makes my skin crawl. I called in a few favors back in Brooklyn and got someone at the local academy to see if they had any interesting books about local history. Turns out they do, and it turns out that old man Henderson was some, or has some pretty strong connections to the Brooklyn crowd. That's something he wrote will help me find the piece of the plans that I'm missing. Okay. Ride the Ferris wheel? Uh, of course. Gotta be abandoned, no lines. Right in. Alan, where did you go? Mommy is coming, Callum! Right after she rides the Ferris wheel. Baby crying. You're a baby crying. You no, know, it's anything in here? Nope. People come into your life for a reason. Dad used to say that before Mom ran off. Yeah. After that, he People mostly just people. drank. Things were different for Don and I. When we met, I was sweeping the floor at Susie's diner. He came in with some workers, but he didn't try to flirt or cop a feel like the others. He just ordered a coffee that and diner sat was that there, place. watching me. When my shift was over, he offered to walk me home. I don't know how to describe that walk. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. It felt like love. It felt like a fairy tale. I can't tell you if Calm was made that night or one of the ones that followed. I think it has to be that night. That one perfect night. Don and I moved in together, but then, well, he died. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed when he was working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Don was there one moment, and then gone. Sometimes people leave your life for no reason. I was three months pregnant with Callum. Fairy tale fucking over. Party mouth lady. Yeah. 
<laughs> Got my question answered. This goes back to the rest of the park. Okay, okay. wait, what's this? Ooh. Oh, it's a... Oh, cool. Oops. Uh, <laughs> Safety violations have anything to do with this place closing down, do you? A lot of people idolize their children. You hear them talking about their kids and just the way they talk? Their fucking voices make me want to vomit. <laughs> My angel likes to read. Good old mom. Little Johnny is so good on the piano. Fuck those people! <laughs> you give up nine months of your life carrying them, you traumatize yourself giving birth to them, and then you spend the rest of your life as their slave. Wiping asses, mopping a piss, feeding them, little life-sucking monsters who take and take and take until... <sighs> I know someone who's not getting a Mother's Day card. Any parent who pretends otherwise is just dishonest. That's called choice supportive bias. I am honest. Callum really grinds my gears, and he owes me everything. Everything! It served the little fuck right if I just abandoned him. Uh, so I guess just leave the park and game ends, or...? <laughs> when? I always wanted to ride this one. <laughs> Here's your I got chance. around to do it before. Here's your chance. I just can't go there. Okay. <laughs> Possibly. Again, I'm sure a roller coaster in a long abandoned park is perfectly safe. What could go wrong? What do you want? We need to talk about Callum. What do you mean? Ooh, wait, whoa. What have you done to him? I? That's insulting. You and your boy are everything uh, that this place doesn't want. <laughs> the antithesis of what we stand for. I got three hands. Where is Callum? The poor child. He tried so hard to do what he was taught. He even left you a trail of breadcrumbs. But the park is just so hungry. Tell me where my son is. Which has it now? Has both of you. No happy ending here, I'm afraid. Just... just leave me alone. Fool. You always were. Fool or alone? Get out of my way. The bigger and his voice got deeper. I can't write it again, I guess. Is that the operator's booth? I always have to check. Yeah, I'm in here. 
Is there anything in here? Oh, okay. There is something in here. It works. The calculations and adjustments work. The transport and storage mechanisms seem to be flawless. What a wonderful day. <laughs> if only these people knew what they were fueling. And so what if a few people leave the park at the end of the day feeling down? So what if the children are more scared than excited on the roller coaster? This could be the doorway to Im immortality. And such doorways open only to those who have the will to find the key. Okay. Time to move on. Can I go on that track? Ah. Oh, what's this? Oh, oh, okay. The witch awaits. Callum has bruises on his arms, finger marks. Someone has been hurting him. Was it you, Mom? I asked him, demanded really, to know where he got the marks. But he doesn't want to answer me. Something has scared him into silence. He doesn't dare talk. He's been changing too. Something sinister lurks in the darkness behind his eyes. I catch him staring at me at odd moments. In the night, he tosses and turns and cries out words that I cannot understand. When I try to soothe him, he snaps and bites at my fingers. I think he wants to talk to me. I think he wants to tell me. They are watching him every minute of every day. They are whispering to him in his sleep, changing him. They are taking my baby away from me. I can save him. And there will be pain. But I love him, and in the end, he will understand why. Yeah. Well, he's just a bit batshit crazy there. The whole town was shocked by that one. Never found out who did it. Ugh. Okay, let's have a look here. Yesterday evening, visitors to Atlantic Island Park were shocked and horrified by the discovery of a dismembered corpse behind the cotton candy stand. According to the local authorities, the corpse had yet to be identified. However, they have confirmed that it remains appear to be those of a child. The corpse was discovered by a group of teenagers from Innsmouth Academy, who noticed a pair of ravens sucking at something just out of sight behind the shack. Daniel Winter, the owner of Atlantic Island Park, has released the following statement. It's a true tragedy when something like this occurs, especially in a place that was designed to bring forth happiness and joy. <laughs> For him. The staff of Atlantic Island Park offer their condolences to the family and friends of the victim and will cooperate fully with authorities to help bring this case to rest. Solomon Chronicle will provide daily updates of this story going forward. Sweet, sweet candy. Let's see. Footsteps? I hear footsteps. Callum? Callum! Uh-huh. Like a jack. Come back! Oh, the breadcrumbs. Oh, I hear footsteps again. Uh oh. That's too big to be counting, though. Poor bastard. We did this to him. He did. <laughs> Hi, Chad. Was it the clown?
Those will help. The, these are mine. Whoa. Something hey. Good pills. Okay. Uh -oh, table. Oh, I know it's a gurney. That's the related stuff. Medical equipment. Bears, lots and lots of Mr. Bears. <laughs> God. I need to be in one. Hi, Dread. Oh, he wants a hug. No, we don't. <laughs> don't leave me here, Cal. Don't touch me. Hey. Clowns. Future Times by Laurel and Howdy. Dolly Button is the signature of your personal creator. I believe her name was Mama. Every 17th child is a magnet for sinfulness, made omniscient by broken fires and the coastal strain. We don't believe that the earth belongs to battered goats and jamrock afterbirth. Only the truly naked wrens of righteous indignation are severed by war across cleavages and trust. Exercise Rhythmia. Belmont will come to the island, bearing the talisman, and he will shatter the seals that bind the orthodoxy of corruption. Only then will the priest shoot... Only then will priest shoot sluts reveal. Housewives pontificate and delayed messiahs make... Sh shells? For the rescue of Tango and Cash. Sweet the temptress who grips the shaft. Twist the shaft. Sconding with third age... Can't make that word out. In the fourth age darkness, while gods lie writhing on the shattered face of the earth. Gala has sweetness and grace, but her days are numbered and heavy fisted hives break forth before frozen wills. And celegraphic actresses in pencil and paper pornography. The all seeing eye will provide decade long updates on this story going forward. Got it. Which then, I, maybe, I guess? Don't leave me here, Callum. Yep. That's bad. Don't let the witch pull me out. Night, night.
Okay. I just feel like carny music playing this is closed. But. The park is a collage of contradictions all of its own. Millions of people die every year in car crashes. And the park has little cars designed specifically to simulate that action. Here the children scream with joy. In the sideshow alley, you can walk away with 15 cents worth of mass-produced Chinese teddy bears while a grinning carny pockets your hard-earned five dollars. And what secrets lie beneath the sullen waters of the lake? The tears of jilted lovers, the soiled condoms of illicit affairs, the clotted blood of the lonely suicide. And the face of the witch looms over it all. I always despised her toothy grin and warty nose. I hate that sparkle in her weathered, watchful eyes. I think Callum is waiting for me inside. Hey, Psycho Mom, let's go. Okay. Hi, Chad. Planet Island Park has closed its gates. A chippering throng of townsfolk gathered as we hung the heavy iron padlock at the, on the gates. Small-minded fools scared of what they don't understand. My machines are <coughs> my machines lie silent and dejected, but I am not beaten. I have sent my wife and son back to Boston and I have retreated here to the House of Horrors. I must think. Okay. I've actually seen Nazi cardboard cutouts in a House of Horrors before. Fit though. freaking out. Nightmare Circus. That kind of fits. Circus burns to the ground on opening night, killing dozens. The owner is put to death by an enraged mob of townsfolk, just as he shouts out a curse. Now Raven, a dark-souled wanderer, comes to the ruins at dusk in search of his missing mother. Let the show begin. Okay. Oh, sweet. I'll make you look at it. What? Show yourself. Oh. Yeah. After they let me out, they gave me Callum back and sent me home with a handful of breadcrumbs. Home bit a sweet home. I barely recognized it. Where there had been color and light, there were shadows and regrets. Where there had been warmth, there was a bone-deep coldness that never went away. 
I tried my hardest to keep the ghosts at bay. Don, watching from the dusty corners while I tried to teach his son to read. My father, coldly assessing me and finding me lacking. I devoted myself to Callum and did the things that they told me. It will get better, they said. Every day will be a little better than the last. I'm in the woods now. Lost and afraid. Things never got any better. Disconnect notice. After multiple attempts to collect payment, we regret to inform you that your service has been disconnected or will be disconnected shortly. Please do the following. Make the payment listed on your last bill. Contact us at number and we can arrange a payment plan. Okay. Just notice that our utilities are being turned off for non payment. Lorraine, I received your letter and I'm quite surprised. You ran off with your father all those years ago, then disappeared off the edge of the map, and then when I finally tracked you down, refused to answer any of my letters. And now you write to me asking for help. I have another family now and another life. Your father was a horrible man, and I regret the years that was I wasted with him. I loved you, I truly did, but every year you grew more and more like him. You were his girl, never really mine. Still, I would have fought for custody if you hadn't run away with him. It broke my heart, but I need to go on living. I can't let you back into my life without picking open old wounds. I'm sorry, Lorraine, but I just can't do it. Maybe one day it will be easier and I can meet Callum, but not yet. I am not ready to forgive you. Please don't contact me again. Karen. Well, she comes out being a crappy mother, honestly. Miss Mallard, as we agreed in our meeting today, we consider you fully recovered from your illness. This letter is an official notification that you're considered sound of mind and body and may return to work at any time. Please note that you should discontinue any medication you've been using and dispose of any remaining medicines. If you feel at any time you are suffering a relapse, then please make contact with your local physician immediately. We wish you continued good health, Dr. Spencer. Hey, what's on TV? Is that just the electric bill notice again? No, something else. Oh, God. Our inquiry into the estate of Mr. Donald Williams has been completed. We regret to inform you that his prim the primary beneficiaries of the estate, including a life insurance settlement for accidental death, were listed as Rose Williams and Richard Williams of New York State, the deceased's parents. Our agency made contact with Mr. and Mrs. Williams and explained your situation, as especially in regards to the birth of Donald's son, Callum. Unfortunately, they are not receptive to our overtures, and they specify that without any legal proof of a biological relationship, they consider you ineligible to receive any of the monies from Donald's estate. They have asked that we no longer contact them regarding this matter. I understand that this may have a negative impact on your current financial situation, and I hope that I am not being too forward when I close the bill for our services for this letter. Sincerely, Edward Stapleton, attorney. Oh, this... Oh, here we go. You guys, this is new. Notes from overseeing psychologist. Lorraine seems to be suffering from depression that began early in her pregnancy. Our discussions have made it obvious that these episodes stem from the grief of losing her partner, Don, who died about six months ago. There are also several unresolved issues with her father. After being kept under careful observation, we provide standard treatment for this, treatment for this disorder, including electroconvulsion therapy. They, nobody does that anymore. Patient responded and made a rapid recovery. That was back in the 70s. It's dated 10 yeah, October Oh, okay, this is the letter from Mom. This, uh, from her, I didn't run away. Dad took me. Can I 
Let's be sure she remembers that Zola prescription. Thank you, William. The new watch is very nice. It has made me a happy carrot. Okay, that's good. Okay. Boogeyman goes a walk, walk, walking. Sneaking, stealing, a stock, stock, stocking. Is he really a talk, talk, talking? Now it's not the time for balking. Cerebral cortex win. See her try, okay. Bye bye, say bye bye. Get phonetic on you. that for like a murder stick hmm, boiled doll head Door's finally open. I guess we're going that way. They can't see anything. See. Oh, I heard a door open. Which way? Oh, that way. Oh, no, that's open again. <laughs> I'll read this. 
Miss Mallard, as you agreed in our meeting today, we consider to be batshit fucking insane. Let's be clear, you are in no way sound of mind and body, and you are a danger to everyone around you. Please note that your only escape from this should be drugs. A shitload of them. Smoking, snorting, oral, intravenous. Take them any way you can and as often as you can. That shit can only make your life better. In case there is any doubt, you are suffering a relapse, and nobody really cares. Nobody can help you now. Don't fuck this up. Dr. Spock, Dunwich Medical. See her lie, see him die, see her cry, see her try, ask her why, say bye bye. Get Dan, Dad cannot him. What's that? Pipe's leaking, I guess. <laughs> nice. Mr. Bear, what happened? Mr. Bear, I think so. Oh, jeez. Okay. See what's cooking in there. Oh, a doll. Okay. The <laughs> raid siren. Pills. You'll watch me rot. Mm. Happy lady. Mm. Mm. Everything got quiet. That's probably bad. are told again and again and from their shape we build our understanding of the world two children are led into the woods they are lost for a time but then are captured by an old witch a child goes missing in Atlantic Island Park he wanders lost for a time before finding his way into the mouth of an old witch in the oldest version of this story the mother and the witch were the same person I never wanted to be the witch. Yet but I am. We are. Aren't I? Let's see. Kids broke in today. It has been so long since I heard laughter, so very long. I took one of them. I couldn't help myself. It was fast, the others didn't notice. I liked hearing him laugh. The boy from the academy. 
I put him on a slab. I tickled him till he couldn't breathe. My machines came to life, warning in time to his gasps and shrieks. I think this is delightful. The change brought me by the machines is not yet complete. There must be other children I can try lay on my slab. Did the rest. Lorraine, Lorraine, don't blame yourself, Lorraine. People lose things all the time. <laughs> Keys, wallet, kids. Take a deep breath and think about the last place you saw your son. Uh... <laughs> Heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. <laughs> 